All right. Welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. Uh, today we're going to look at how I just lost my entire year's worth of gains in like a matter, well, mostly a matter of like one day, but also a matter of like two months because I also shorted the queues. So yay for me. Yeah. All right. Well, if you guys enjoy this kind of entertaining stock market content of Two Stupid Guys Trading Stocks, by all means, give us a like and subscribe below. We'd love to have you guys along on this adventure. With that, we'll get to it. <laughs> Huh? Huh? Uh. Two stocks. It's a lot of anguish in your face there in that picture there, Dylan. Oh yeah. Great time for Dilly. Um the basically, just so anyone doesn't think this is clickbait, I I think I started the year at like uh, 50k and a little bit of change, like mm -hmm. 50k and 500 or something like that. My peak was like 65 or 66. Okay. I'm now at 50K. Two reasons. Fubo murdered me. And I shorted the queues for like the last three months. And that has not worked out well. No. The time will come for that, but not right now. Apparently, it might not ever come, to be honest. I mean, but what I want to do to be non-biased here is relook at my Fubo position. Because I very much believe in this company. I think it's a great idea. Vinny is great because he doesn't believe in any growth company um, until they end up making like five billion dollars. Apple, Microsoft, Google doesn't believe in any of them until they start having a profit. Right. Well, I, I would point out the hypocrisy of Dylan believing in this company, but he he doesn't subscribe to their service. <laughs> yeah, we also greatly disagree on that because that means like I I can't like I don't have uh, like I can't go for Toyota. I can't go for anything I don't have a share in. I don't watch TV. Yeah. I don't watch soccer. So that that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I don't have any Google products. I don't. We have a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, shit. We do. Have... Oh, no, I cussed. <laughs> oh, all good, it... That's okay, right? Yeah, it's no worries. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have a Facebook. I'm definitely going to buy some of them. I don't. I don't really have any social media. There's... I don't. I don't have any intel. I'm gonna buy. Something. So I really disagree with the fact that you have to own products of the company to have it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um, I'm good. So here's uh, we're gonna look at Fubo's earnings, their highlights, and then I tried to look at this from a perspective of I hate Fubo to try to see if I can talk myself out of it. Vinny's gonna do his best, and we're gonna kind of look at where we're at. I don't know what Vinny prepared. Yeah. So this is you want to look at read this stuff off real quick. So, you know, FUBU, like any kind of early on uh, hyper growth companies, having phenomenal year over year growth, you know, 156% revenue. They're, they're growing their advertising revenue, which is a small subset of their actual total revenue. Um, you know, it, it just, you know, when, you, when you're make, making these triple digit numbers, you're growing your average revenue per user as well, like it, doing all sorts of great stuff in terms of growth. Okay. I will give them that. They're doing very well. That's basically what this is. Yeah. I didn't like how they compared a year over year and they didn't compare quarter over quarter because they previously were doing that. I mean, quarter year over year mat, numbers matter more. Quarter over quarter only matters when you're like truly in a hyper growth stage, which they are. So like I, I get that, but um, I, I, year over year numbers is more what I would care about, to be honest. Yeah, but last year they were absolute crap. That's why I'm going to point out. So let's <laughs> go to the go to the next slide here. So. This is uh, this is their subscribers over the last quarters. All right, so clearly they are going parabolic via subscribers. That's pretty undeniable. Yeah. Um, they also, at the time of their earnings, are actually already over a million. Uh -huh. um, so they are already hit another sixty k plus that, and they still have another month and a half left in the quarter. Yeah. And they um, so announced that major acquisition of Molotov TV. Uh, which in and of itself is, should add, I forget exactly how many subscribers, but it, it's a sizable acquisition. Four million. Yeah. Four million subs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're not going to be toy to the same degree of uh, uh, revenue in terms of use, per user compared to Fubu's core business. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a big number. Yeah, it is a big number. It was definitely an interesting acquisition. Um, it is important. Everyone's going to be like, they don't have the sports that I watch. Okay. One, they are like, catering to soccer so if you're not a soccer guy you're right they don't have the sports that you watch i get yeah. it also don't like soccer so i don't well i don't like not like it I just, it's too long <laughs> all right nexties 
So this is their full year subs, full year revenue. Obviously, numbers look awesome. Um, I'm going to try to look at this from a bearish perspective over the next couple of slides. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see. Um, can you move us to the side? I can. There we go. Um, so this is what they put in their in their um, their presentation, being like, "Hey, look how much no, you know our numbers have come down." Um, you can look at their 91.5 for subscriber latest suspenses, all that stuff. Everything's better, right? Go to the next slide for me. I took these from their other letters. Okay. It's actually got worse. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually an interesting, uh, interesting point there that they're trailing off as far as that goes. Now, what they're basically reflecting here is that they're, they're trying to show that they're trending towards profitability. Uh, by showing the actual expenses compared to revenue is decreasing as a percentage there. But, mm -hmm. and, you know, these are kind of highlighting the exact opposite trend that they're losing more and more money as they scale. <laughs> exactly. That was, so that was the, by quarter. Cause I specifically remember 155 the last two quarters. And then they were touting 165, like guys, we're down for like 300. I'm like, wait a minute, that's worse yeah. from what we were. Um, and you can see it's mostly marketing. Marketing is the big one there. Yeah. Understood. So same thing. This looks awesome. You're like, hey, look at the advertising revenue and how much we're you're like, we like tripled or doubled or, you know, whatever. Go to the next one. Yeah. So here's what they're doing per quarter. There is definitely a slow from second quarter to the third quarter, especially when you look at the subs added. Okay. We added like 320K subs in between two uh, quarter two and quarter three. Okay. But somehow we only got 2 million more revenue for uh -huh. advertising. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, overall, I, I was actually looking at another analysis where they looked at um, uh, streaming advertising and, and how that still makes up a, a small percentage of the market comparison to like kind of, um, you know, classic media. But when you look just for, for watch hours in reality, yeah, streaming still is undervalued in terms of yes. advertising revenue. It is. And I do think that'll go up. I saw an article that they were hoping for $20 a person. Okay. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think it's Facebook makes like 50 bucks a user. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we're at average revenue per user. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So once again, this one's going up. It's like, all right, that's pretty good. Over a year, you got an extra $7 out of person. The adjusted uh, contribution margin is solid. Go to the next, uh, nexties. Mm -hmm. This one was actually impressive. Okay. Um, they did, they are consistently, and I mapped it out the last three quarters. They actually are consistently going up like two to three bucks a quarter, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, no, I agree. Especially since, you know, they, they haven't really changed their subscription prices. It's really, this is driven by the advertising increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So light shed partners, uh, when this came out, they slammed Fubo stock. They raised doubts whether a company can make a viable business out of its money losing multi channel video. Yada yada said Fubo TV is overpaying for sports rights, which they definitely may be. Um, the end game is sell the company before everyone realizes how bad the underlying financial story actually is. I actually found an article. Um, this is actually a plus for me. I know that sounds weird. Um, I found an article from December 2020, also by them, okay. predicting like a bunch of things that did not happen at all. Okay. And they're saying that it was the, the most attractive short they've ever seen in their entire lives. Perfect. And uh, yeah, they also said that they, they made a lot of points in the article, but it was that the advertising would increase, the average revenue would increase, a, a bunch of stuff that clearly did increase. Okay. So I was like, oh. Yeah, Light Shed Partners, actually, I've never heard of them before, but it sounds like it's just a short selling kind of thesis is what they, they published. Yeah, pretty okay. much. And it's funny because in their thesis, their one plus was the CEO. They're like, this yeah. guy is a badass. <laughs> Interesting. I uh, I actually used a, a different short seller thesis from a different company entirely within like a, a subscriber based thing to generate my price prediction for, for Fubo TV. <laughs> Solid. Can't wait yeah. to hurt my feelings. Perfect. Yeah, just a little bit. All right. Um, so. All this revenue is only the subscription services and not the sports. They have spent, oh no. Oh, <laughs> uh, I forgot that was in there. 
Uh, they spent a ton on their upcoming platform for sports but and have not received revenue for it yet. Sports is supposed to be their third revenue stream. Okay. Um, yeah, wow. let's get rid of that. Um, so basically, they have no. Keep going. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so basically, um, they have spent a lot of upfront costs, acquisition of Peralto Sports, Vigatory Sports. They paid a lot for like Iowa, Arizona, New Jersey, and that's all reflected in essentially getting zero return, which is why they're fairly negative each quarter. Um, so that won't really come to fruition until now they just opened up iowa and then they're going to keep on doing more states okay so do i stay and wait for that do i bail interesting it, i mean it's it's a uh it's a tough one honestly um you know comparison to your cost basis how how far off are you i'm at my cost basis is 30. okay so you're under cost basis what is that like uh 18 or something like that a little under 20 percent yeah. Yeah. Someone in the ballpark. All right. So one of the questions that kind of arises is how do you value these kind of, uh, you know, post revenue, but pre profitable uh, profitability companies that are using the subscription based model. And I based my valuation here on using something that Citron partners, I know pretty infamous out there on the short selling thesis. Um, I don't know if you know what their prediction for, for Peloton was. This, this is where I, I drew this basically from this, this modeling system. For Peloton, yeah. What? When would did they make the prediction? I forget exactly. Um, I want to say earlier this year. I'm gonna go. They said like they're really mean. So I'm gonna go like twenty dollars or something yeah. crazy low. Five? Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so they used enterprise value per subscriber as their metric. So they took a few different you know subscription based companies and calculated their enterprise value. Enterprise value basically is you know this giant blue square here. So Dylan, you just bought a home. Basically, when you look at the, the value of the home, it, 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 there's the equity, what you own of the home, and then mm -hmm. the, the mortgage, the, the debt mm -hmm. of the home, right? And though both of those things added together represents the entire value of the home. That's enterprise value. So that's what's saying that the entire business would cost you debt-free. What would you end up with at the end of the day? So these are the companies that I used here. I used Netflix, Peloton, Chegg. We're going to do upcoming analysis of Chegg, actually. And Teladoc, one we have done previously. Um, so you, you look at get the market cap. I got this data from CNBC today. Um, I looked at the net debt. I calculated the net debt, I should say, uh, based upon the uh, 2020 end of fiscal year uh, numbers that CNBC had, um, calculating an enterprise value for each of these companies. And then I looked at their most recent kind of quarterly statements and got their subscriber numbers. All right. Um, so that's where all these numbers came from. And they calculated enterprise value per sub. All right. Uh, now, anything kind of like stand out to you as far as like the numbers here? Netflix is awesome. Yeah. I mean, yes. Okay. Uh, they're kind of like in the middle of the pack. And once I did the average of these four companies, they're pretty close to that. And Peloton awesome. is way overpriced. <laughs> yeah. Peloton is still expensive to compare to its peers, uh, which is why they came up with that $5 number. Uh, they didn't use uh, Chegg in their analysis. I, that was one I threw in because I'm looking at them. Like Wait, I said, anyways. Is this, is this Peloton market cap after they just lost like 60% of their company? Yep. That's as of today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. So uh, I, I use that 2000 uh, enterprise value per sub um, kind of average across the, the industry there uh, by the multiply that times the number of subs that Palata, I mean, uh, a Fubo TV had as of the end of their most recent fiscal quarter uh, come up with a $2.06 billion enterprise valuation. The market cap right now is like 3.4 billion. Um, their net debt actually positive. They have more cash than they had debt. So that, that kind of reduces the, the number there a little bit. So 76 million. Uh, the number of shares outstanding, 141.67 million, gives me a price uh, per share of about $14 per share, which represents a, about a 40% or so downside from the current market valuation based upon oh, this method. I'll take that. Well, now it's complicated, right? Because, you know, if, as you saw on the previous slide here, the range of this is, is pretty wide, honestly. It's not the most yeah. kind of... Um, you know, finite tool, but it gives you a relative idea of where, um, you know, the, these companies stand compared to some of their other peers. Uh, now, like I said, that $14 per share price, 
I think, honestly, it kind of reflects the shrewdness of the fact that this acquisition of Molotov TV is going to be funded primarily through shares, right? That's what they're giving mm-hmm. in, is equity. Um, and they're basically getting a discount, right? If, if, if you're purchasing something with something that's, you know, kind of inflated in price, then you are getting it for actually a better price. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. They absolutely <laughs> um, are. I tried to do a little bit of digging into Molotov TV, and I, I don't speak French. Uh, so <laughs> that was pretty much the, the limit of what I could learn about them. Where's your commitment to the channel, Vinny? Just learn French for the article. Yeah, je ne sais pas. Uh, <laughs> that's as far as I got. What a loser. That, yeah, I, 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 uh, I tried, but I think to make a good estimation of this uh, acquisition is beyond my skill set because, like I said, the language barrier was right there was enough for me to have no idea. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, go to the chart for me. So, for me, the most important thing for valuation is whatever the market dictates because logic does not matter. Intel should be like triple the price, and it's just not. And honestly, you can't be like, well, it will soon. It's been like that for 20 years. So I don't <laughs> like it's just whatever the market dictates the price over logic is, is where I'm at. So I get rid of this chunk when I look at this and I get rid of this because this is absurd. This is a short squeeze. This is a short squeeze. This is before they kind of went big. Right. So mm-hmm. to me, that's not a good sample size. So I like to look at where they actually hover in price. And where the market has dictated their price seems to be between $22 and about $30. That's where the most volume of shares are sold. That's where the most acquisitions, where um, not acquisitions, where the most buyers and sellers have found balance. That's what this line is right here at approximately $25.79. Yeah. Um, hey, I don't make it. I'm just following the other people. All right. Yeah. Um, so. The reason why I still I really like this company is because they could do, um, you know, like partnerships like with FanDuel, which they did in the past. Um, DKNG, what a DraftKings. Yeah, they could do that stuff, but they're building a foundation and they have a product that no one else can offer. And that's watching TV and having simultaneous betting. They're making betting into a video game, kind of like mm-hmm. cryptocurrency. <laughs> And that's working out quite well for crypto people. Yeah, that is. That so, is. <laughs> so I I do think, A, I appreciate your valuation. It's nice to see from a very different perspective. I am going to keep Fubo. I do have too many shares. Okay. I have, I actually bought more when they hit 25. <laughs> boy. I'm at 750. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, tell me what you guys think. Uh, you know, clearly this is going to be a bad year for Dylan because I'm back to zero gains after the last two months. Thanks yeah. to shorting the queues and Fubo um, just completely just kind of bending me over. So that's good. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, let us know what you think down in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This is going to get taken down. Thanks, guys. <laughs>